Good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time of day we are worshiping together and however we are worshiping. If you are on a phone, a tablet, a computer, or a television set, we welcome you to Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. When we prepare our hearts for worship, one of the most challenging things in life is to be where our bodies are, have our mind be there too. That often we are somewhere out in the future, we are somewhere in the past. So take a moment to sit up a little straighter, stand up wherever you are, and take some deep breaths, and center yourselves and be in the presence and the spirit of God. Amen. We have some announcements at Good Shepherd coming in the month of March. So beginning on March 2nd, that is Ash Wednesday. We will have an Ash Wednesday service here in this sanctuary at 6 p.m. Then every Wednesday in the month of March during Lent, we will have a family church service that will be at 6 o'clock. It will go 6 to about 6.35, 6.40. It's going to have some really nice music. We have Terry, uh, who is our band teacher here, will be uh, helping with the music. Benedetta Baldesio uh, is also a musician uh, as part of Good Shepherd. She's going to be providing the music, and hopefully we're going to have some kids who will be part of that. So please, this is a, a family service that we're trying to have of uh, people who may be less you know familiar with church so if you if you are that person or if you have people like that in your life pl please invite them to our family service at six o'clock wednesdays during the month of march also coming up we have a friday uh, zoom bible study it's 11 o'clock and we have ordered the book books mere christianity by c.s lewis when we get those books in and then we'll uh, announce that to people and whoever would like to come and pick up a book. We will do a book study over the weeks ahead and we will be reading Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. So stay tuned for that and we hope that you can be part of that as well. We come together today to celebrate family, the families who gather in this church, the families who are inspired by this church, the families who find support from this church and the family that is this church. Today, we answer Christ's call to foster love, to encourage growth in faith, service, and learning, and to create community. Today, we hold fast to the conviction that we are stronger together than we are separately. Today, we remember that we are all blessed children of God. As we worship today, we humbly yet boldly declare that we are the body of Christ. So let us worship God. Thanks be to God. This is a time where we come to God in confession, or it's a unison prayer of wholeness and healing. It's where we lift off the burdens on our, on our heart. And when we lift off the things we have said or not said, the things we've done or not done, when we lift those up to God, we are, we are saying yes to a God who works for peace and reconciliation and forgiveness and pardon. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things that we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's take a moment for our own silent prayers. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead inside and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved in the name of Christ. Your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred, we sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is despair, hope. Grant, O divine master, that we may seek to console, to understand, to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our gospel reading today, it comes from Gospel of Luke. It's chapter 6, it's verses 17 through 26. Jesus came down with the twelve, stood on a level place, with a great crowd of his disciples and great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. 
and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. And then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry, now for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, revile you, defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God endures forever. Amen. Friends, please pray with me. Loving God, may the meditation of all of our hearts, the words read, proclaim, restore, renew us, and make us new in you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This is a powerful gospel reading. It comes from Luke chapter 6. And Luke chapter 6 is a very difficult chapter. It is one that for a lot of us we want to just skip over. Let's read Luke 5 and let's skip over Luke 6. And why not? Let's just skip over 7 too. And let's move on down to 8. So it is a difficult chapter laying out some uh, some beliefs that we are struggling with. As, as I read, how do we make sense of that in the context of where many of us live, certainly as, as Americans? So it is a challenge. And this is the Sermon on the Plain. In the Gospel of Matthew, it is the Sermon on the Mount. This is Jesus' Sermon on the Plain. And what makes this powerful is that Jesus is coming down and now is on level ground, so there's a metaphor here, speaking plainly. But who he's talking to is important. He isn't talking to everyone. He isn't talking to us. He is turning and he's talking to the disciples. And this is a call to action. So when he is looking them in the eye, he is saying these things about the poor, about the hungry. He is saying, walking through these things as a call to action. And he is juxtaposing them with one another that you see when he reads about, you know, when you're hungry, you'll be filled. When you weep, you will laugh. When people hate you, that you will uh, find a place to be rejoiced. Uh, when you are, uh, when you are, are rich, he has some real strong language for the poor. It's the strongest language in the whole New Testament on what Jesus is writing for the poor, the poor as being blessed. And this is challenging when you are an American. When you turn on the television and you are watching a televangelist minister over the, now, go turn it on right now and go watch one. You know, if you're on, uh, you know, if you're on Spotify or something, uh, turn it on, you can listen. And they have what's called a gospel of wealth. If you believe in Jesus, Jesus is going to bless you with all of these material blessings. And when you have all of these material blessings, when you are wealthy, it's because God loves you. And that's how this cycle goes, this gospel of wealth. God loves you, Jesus loves you, and you are wealthy. And then it doesn't hold up at all with this reading of Luke. Luke is crystal clear. He's on the plane. He's on level ground and speaking plainly. And what's powerful about this is as he's only talking to the disciples in this call to action. And it is a kingdom of God that we are living in our own world here, in the lives that we have, in the systems that we live in. And here we are trying to make sense out of this and be faithful people. 
And then Jesus speaking plainly here is saying that even though we live in these constructs, even though we live here, that we are called to this place of how we have to, to give, how we receive, who we live with, who we see. Our school board is having to look at diversity and we're talking to a diversity uh, specialist and he was talking to us and he said, once you see things, you can't unsee it. When you learn how to look through a lens of diversity, all those things that you saw as normal, or you didn't see it at all, now through a lens of diversity, you can't unsee it. And it changes you forever. And this passage in Luke, you can't unsee it. It changes you from the inside out on how we live with the poor amongst us and that they're blessed and trying to reconcile that with extreme language toward wealth and comfort. And how do we balance those places in our life? Because we're all trying to pay a mortgage, pay the rent, make a car payment. You know, if you're a good shepherd, there's a, there's a private tuition. There's all these things that we're trying to pay for and not feel bad about it or guilty about it. It's where we live, it's how we live, it's who we are. And we don't wanna be shamed for that. However, there is a place that Luke speaks plainly about this belovedness that these poor have, the hungry have, and that we have a mission and that we have a responsibility with whatever we have. And we can't unsee that. So a very powerful text for all of us to be changed in that and that's why luke chapter 6 is one that we'd rather just skip over it and not have to deal with the uncomfortableness but that's what faith often is it's having to encounter these uncomfortable places and it's how we do it together as i've mentioned diversity before that we are stronger together and that togetherness as we do it doesn't mean perfect. It doesn't mean that it's going to be finally over someday. It means living together as we go through this, understanding ways when we can't unsee it anymore. It's truly a very powerful text that we have and how we live as people of faith with these words being called, as I mentioned earlier about the televangelist and living in America and the gospel of wealth that when we have these things, it means that it's even subtly applied, sometimes overtly, that God blesses us more and God loves us more if we have these things. And here's an example of God's love and blessing. And Luke is crystal clear that all these material things, all of these constructs, they are not blessings. They're only blessings when we use these for ways of helping other people. Over Christmas time, I went to San Francisco and I brought uh, my 12 year old daughter and her friend and then her father. We went to go see a play and it was in a part of town. I haven't, just haven't been to it in a while. And we went and it was shocking to see. It was always kind of a rough part of town. I used to work down there not that long ago. And it was always just rougher, but still a place where you could walk and be and comfortably. And then now it was deeply frightening to be there. The amount of poverty it was shocking to think that this poverty and how widespread it was is happening in our country, in our state, in right down the road from us. That level of poverty was jaw dropping. And as we tried to navigate in the streets to get to the theater and we're looking for a restaurant meant we were walking through with people coming up to us and it was just shocking to see and the, sh the another shocking thing is that we know that we live in a country in silicon valley which is one of the most densely wealthy areas in the world and with when you look at the billionaires the richest people of the world 
when you look at that list, a good many of them live in Silicon Valley and San Francisco. So you see this incredible wealth. And yet, here is right in front of us this social catastrophe, an epidemic that we can solve lots of things. We could get it a vaccine in less than a year for the coronavirus that American and scientific ingenuity could do that. Previous vaccine records would take four years at the earliest. And now in one year, a vaccine was put together because we said we need this. And it was, it happened in one year. And yet, with all of that ability to turn our focus and solve things, to make the world a, a better, a more vibrant place, a more loving place. We're not doing it. And how do we reconcile that with those resources? And I don't have the answer, but it's living with that, that Luke points out very clearly here. You can't unsee it. And then now how do we take that with who we are, how we are, and how are we applying that in some way where we are instruments of God's peace. We are instruments of Christ's love. My friends, may it be so for each of you and also very much for me. Amen.
Friends, this is a time in our worship where we come to God with our offering, offerings of our time, our talent, our treasure. If you'd like to offer your time or talent to be part of a ministry of Good Shepherd, please contact us. If you have a creative idea or something that you would like to see be part of our church community, that you would like to you know, just see, see that come alive here, please contact us and see how we can partner together. And we also invite you to be part of, maybe there's a committee or a, a council that you would like to be part of, part of leadership at Good Shepherd, part of a, a guiding voice of faith in our community. Also, it's our treasure. This is where we offer up our financial gifts to God. And we invite you to either come to the church and bring a check in, you can mail it in, or go to our website and there'll be a donate and you can set up a regular gift, which is a wonderful thing to do. That way it's just set up and it's gonna do it automatically. So please, we invite you to be part of that and you can set up where it gives uh, monthly, it gives weekly, it's a one-time gift, it's an annual gift, whatever feels comfortable for you. But we ask you to be part of the ministry of Good Shepherd that way. Now we come to God with a prayer of inclusivity. And as a church that we are always seeking unity, that as we said in our prayer earlier, that we are stronger together than we are apart. And Lord, more than ever now, in the world that we live in, the country that we live in, prayers for unity, prayers for truth, prayers for guidance. We believe in one God, maker of heaven and earth, who in goodness created us and by grace sustains us. We believe in Jesus Christ, beloved child of God, became a human being and lived among us, experiencing fully the joys, sorrows, temptations of human life. While Jesus walked the earth, he taught and healed, but most of all, he loved, showed us how to love one another. By us and for us, he was crucified. He died and was buried. Yet Jesus Christ rose again and lives on, freeing us and empowering us to be children of God. We believe in the Holy Spirit, poured out upon the early disciples at the day of Pentecost, upon us and our baptisms. She was spoken through the prophets and continues to speak through us today. The Holy Spirit joins us together in the body of Christ, yearns with us to pray for those things too deep for words, offers us forgiveness, nourishes us in faith, brings us to the wholeness of life everlasting. Amen. And this is the time where we come to God in prayers, prayers for our life and prayers for our world. Blessed are those whose trust is in you. Strengthen the faith of those who profess your name. Bring reassurance to those who doubt of fear. Through your church, speak continued blessings into the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Those who trust in you are like trees planted by streams of water. Bless fruit trees with an abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from, from destruction. Restore land that has eroded after deforestation. Resurrect woodlands after forest fires. God of grace, hear our prayer. Search for hearts of those who govern, that they lead with humility, inspire leaders to collaborate on policies to protect people and the planet. Sustain truth tellers, social movements that challenge society to become more honest and just. God of grace, hear our prayer. Send your blessings of mercy upon those who long for consolation. Tend to those struggling with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for us who are hungry. Console those who face persecution. Grant peace to all who suffer. God of grace, hear our prayer. Renew this congregation in our shared mission as we plan and dream for the future. You're preparing, inspire us by the examples of Martin Luther and all the reformers. Bless new projects and new ministry partnerships. God of grace, hear our prayer. Christ is raised from the dead and so we cling to the hope of the resurrection. We praise you for the lives of the saints who have lived and died in the hope of eternal life with you. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in our promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith, 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And friends, let's now turn to one another and pass the peace of Christ. Please send in new photographs of 2022, where you are, what you are doing. If you haven't sent one in and you are watching, and please do, wherever you live, send us a photograph so that we can include you in our online passing of the peace. Now let's turn to one another as we go out into this world and greet people when you're at the store or in the parking lot, and you can say it or think it, that God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Friends, this is the most generous invitation that we can make in our tradition, and all are welcome to this table. As we read in our gospel story of a cane of grace, a grace of joy, a grace of, an, of abundance, the most joyful feast for the people of God. People who come from the east and the west, the north and the south to sit at the table of the kingdom of God. When our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it, and their eyes were opened and they recognized him. All can come to this table. If you're seeking to know, know Christ, you are welcome to this table. If you've been baptized in Christ, you are welcome to this table. All can come, no matter where you're born, how much money you make, or who you love. God be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God is right to give God thanks and praise. O oh God, before time, O oh God, at the end, we delight in the splendor of your universe. Daily we praise your continuing creation. We give thanks for your people. We glorify you now and forever. O oh God of the covenant, O oh God of the church, we come as your children to this table. We give thanks for your presence in congregations around the world. We praise you now and forever. When Christ came to the table with his disciples on the night of his arrest, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and said, this is my body given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he poured the cup and said, this is a new covenant that's sealed in my blood, that's shed for the forgiveness of sins. And every time you drink from this cup and you eat from this loaf, you will, you will proclaim the living Lord. My friends, these are the gifts of God and all of you are the people of God.
Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer, the perfect prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And O God, as mother comforts her child, so you comfort our people, carrying us in your arms and satisfying us with this bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ. Send us now as your disciples, announcing peace and justice, proclaiming that the reign of God comes near through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And receive the benediction. Let us go with God's grace and know that we have but little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. Oh, be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Let us all go in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.